Uh, would you like to introduce the yes, report? Yes, certainly, Commissioner. Yeah. Um, Each quarter we uh, provide you with details of um, all ongoing issues in relation to complaints. The reports are effectively going to be in two parts. Firstly, the kind of statistical information about the types of complaints and issues that are um, currently being raised within the course. And the second is a little bit more detail about some specifics. So um, I'm going to invite both John and Julie to present these reports. Could you just introduce yourselves uh, before we, we get into the report, Max? Yeah, absolutely. Julie Sykes, Head of Professional Standards. Hi, Julie. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, we've uh, provided you with a full copy of the uh, tactical intelligence assessments. What follows is just the brief headlines, uh, which cover the period from March 2016 to May. Um, so within that period, we've had a total number of the total number of allegations that have been made have steadily been decreasing. Uh, there were a total of 183 complaint allegations in May, which is a decrease of 11% on the previous month. And in terms of the yearly total complaint allegations, we've seen um, an increase by 550, sorry, 548, which equates to 27%, and complaint cases, which increased by 597, which is 43%. Uh, the rise in the number of complaints reported is almost entirely due to the way in which the complaints are now recorded. This follows recommendations from the HMIC and the IPCC to ensure that West Yorkshire Police has got the ability to appropriately check its own procedures and performance. Uh, so minor complaints, which is fairly by an officer to return a telephone call, would previously have been captured and dealt with at district level, but these are now dealt with centrally and form part of uh, the numbers that we see here. And that is to ensure that we've got greater transparency and accountability to the public. Um, from June 2014 to May 2015, there were 524 minor dissatisfaction cases recorded. If these cases had all been recorded as complaints, the total number of cases would have amounted to 1,902, an overall increase of 73 complaints from the previous 12 months, which equates to 4%. We continue our discussions with the IPCC to ensure that West Yorkshire Police are both meeting the requirements of the statutory guidance as well as best serving West Yorkshire within the constraints of the regulations in which we work. In relation to local resolutions, these are now showing an increase of 31% as a proportion of all complaints in the last 12 months, um, which has increased from 38 uh, to 69%. The service recovery team within the Professional uh, Standards Department, which was implemented in February, have had a great impact both in terms of the timeliness and quality of complaint investigations uh, and the high proportion of cases which are now being dealt with as part of the local resolution process. The appeals data in terms of the rate which has been compiled for West Yorkshire stands at 4% and this is mainly local resolution appeals for that period. It's of note that only one appeal has been held in terms of the service recovery team, which we'll talk more about later since February. The yearly totals for conducts have increased by 31%. Uh, this is mainly instances of authority respecting courtesy, orders and instructions and confidentiality. But work is ongoing to pass out these messages to districts and departments through uh, localised health checks that we're doing, training um, and then there's local communication through screen savers and other forms of communication. Okay, thank, thanks for that. Um, I think, I, you know, obviously I welcome the, um, the recent decreases, as you've, you've mentioned, within the report. Um, you will be aware that um, as the Police and Crime Commissioner um, I instigated a review back in 2014 called the, the Crawford Review and out of that um, came a number of, of recommendations around how we sort of oversee and, and try and improve the, the process generally. So. It was really just to explore with you as one of the questions around um, one of the things in there, for example, was uh, the wording around letters to complainants and 
uh, really making the, the whole thing a bit more customer friendly in that sense. Do, would you like to just comment on, on that aspect of, of the work? Uh, just in terms of the wording of the letters then, you quite right, the Crawford Report um, raised some issues around that, particularly the need to have them in plain English. Um, as a result of that, we have done some dip sampling uh, with the help of your staff, Commissioner, back in March of 2015. And that was a, a quality assurance exercise in relation to the letters. Um, following that, a recommendation was made that the letters should be more personal to the complainant, feedback which we have acted upon. We've uh, conducted a further dip sample locally within PSD and as a result of that issued guidance to districts and departments when they still had some responsibility for writing out to complainants to ensure that there was that consistency and personal approach. Uh, we had um, some success with that, but I think it's fair to say perhaps not as much as we would have hoped for. However, since February 2016, uh, all work, as you're aware, in terms of complaints and misconduct, and I don't work within the professional standards department, so I'm satisfied that we've got greater uh, consistency and better quality and personalisation of the letters. I've personally done some work with um, some of your own staff commissioner, Stuart Piper and Karen Gray, looking specifically at um, complaints that come linked to historic uh, abuse, whether that is sexual or violent abuse. And as a result of that, we're doing some more work with staff internally. But that's not so much around the wording of the letters. It's built around gaining that additional safeguarding knowledge so that the letters are genuinely of the right tone yeah. when they're going back. Yeah. OK, th thanks for that. I'm uh, pleased to hear about that. Also linked to that review was the issue of uh, using mediation as a process. Uh, could, could you update, update me on that? Uh, yes, uh, once again I've been working with um, your staff commissioner, in particular Fraser Hines and um, Julia Reid. A procurement process was undertaken, Yorkshire Mediation was selected as um, the group who would assist with the mediation. Following that we've had a, a number of discussions looking at how that process would work in reality internally. We have a meeting that's been arranged in the next couple of weeks which will also include federations and unions and uh, supervisors from the service recovery team. Uh, that is a consultation based on uh, a way forward which we think will work which brings the service recovery team once again central to assisting the mediation process and making that work. Yeah, no, no, thanks for that. I'd be interested to uh, to see the outcome of, of that. And again, very much in line with the um, the use of local resolution, which is you know the real impact uh, on on the figures, which again is is good good to see. Um, so you know, obviously, if, if complaints can be dealt with and nipped in the bud early on uh, in an appropriate way before they can escalate into something much bigger then you know that, that I think that's a better way to, to deal with things um, just specifically spe specifically looking at the uh, some of the figures in the tables that have been um, provided um, and it does appear that, the, that there has been a very high increase in what's called neglect of duty complaints um, could you just explain what, what really sits behind that? Yes, um, as you rightly point out, there does appear to have been a high rise in neglect of duty complaints. This mainly stems from the decision to record all matters of complaints rather than minor uh, dissatisfactions of the old MIs as they would have been. So previously, if it was felt that a matter could be resolved quickly, either by a phone call uh, to the complainant or a quick face to face meeting, it was unlikely that that would end up being recorded. Um, particularly if it could be dealt with within the 10 day uh, statutory period. Uh, this usually related to issues where members of the public wanted an update on crime or they wanted the property back, so in the scheme of things very low level uh, instances. For the last two years all matters have been recorded as complaints, so we don't have the MI category uh, anymore. The vast majority of these issues fall under the category of neglect and failing duty. So the latest figures for July, uh, which are due to be published shortly, um, will show that there were 462 MI cases between July 2014 and June 2015 
And if these had been recorded as public complaints, they'd amounted to 1,915. So in reality, although the numbers seem high in our tactical assessment, it's around the 5% mark in reality. So that, that's mainly down to the, the way in which the recording has changed. That's right, and it's, yeah. and it's to ensure that we've got that absolute transparency. So any complaint that comes into PSD gets recorded, um, even with the service recovery team. There's no issues, I will make a quick phone call and, and resolve it right. without recording it. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, just a question, I suppose, around miscon misconduct. Is that still seen as a, uh, a principal strategic risk for the force? Uh, if it isn't, what's changed? Uh, and if it is, what's being done about it? I'll, I'll take that one. Yep. So, so on the risk register, it's still an amber risk. It's still there. Uh, still the three key risks to the force are around inappropriate sexual relationships, uh, misuse of uh, steroid pro-hormones, and also computer misuse and potential corruption. You'll, you'll have seen in, in the media and off previous briefings we've had a number of criminal cases going through the courts uh, recently uh, and both you know, the, the impact upon communities and victims which is at the forefront for us uh, and then secondly the reputational damage that does to the confidence of police and is why it's still there. So there's plenty of mitigating uh, activity in place both overt and covert uh, policing activity internally but it is still a risk that uh, is on the force register. Uh, we're going to undertake another internal communications campaign, uh, which we've, we've done in the last two years, but we're going to do it all again, uh, utilising some of the, the, the more high profile cases. So it is there, but equally I'm, I'm quite satisfied that we've got uh, now, since February this year, an even more robust response within the professional standards department. And I think, again, just to reassure you, Commissioner, um, PSD have a key input very early on now in the training of new officers and new staff so that the force values and the messages can be reinforced right at the start of an individual's career with us. Yeah. No, no thanks for that. And uh, as you know, we, we, we have met both of us recently with uh, our new IPCC. Yeah. Um, commissioner for our region, although it's a the region that covers a huge, uh, a huge area beyond Yorkshire and Humber, um, you know, and I think it's important that we we, we, we re-emphasise yeah. those standards. Really, um, I think it's I think yeah. it's quite difficult because some of the cases that the IPCC are still involved with are quite historic. So yeah. the changes that um, John and Julie and the team have implemented. I haven't necessarily started to have that impact yet in terms of perhaps IPCC related cases. We're still dealing with the pre change issues yep. in that particular arena. Yep. I would hope over the next 12 yeah. to 24 months we would see less IPCC appeal cases, for example. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and as you know, that the, there is legislation. Um, in the offing around options yeah. of how PCCs and police forces deal with complaints and you know we're looking at that and we've had some conversations yeah. um, but ideally you know if we are demonstrating we are dealing with complaints in, a, in an effective and fair way uh, within professional standards then you know that that's a place that I would prefer to be in rather than necessarily wanting to take on more responsibility because we know that would uh, potentially require um, more resources and, uh, and, and disruption within the organisation so um, it's just really just seeking that reassurance. Well yeah. I, I think the processes that we have refined, <coughs> the conversation that we've had about potential further changes. I think it's incredibly important that you feel able to hold me to account every day for the behaviour and standards of our officers and staff. And I actually think the process that we have, bearing in mind how regularly we have conversations around these issues, works extremely well. And therefore, I know that the legislation may enable police and crime commissioners to take on further responsibilities, but I feel, in terms of being able to reassure the public, 
that the process that we have at the moment works extremely well. Okay, thank you. And I think just finally then a question around um, what impact has the introduction of public hearings had and what's been the take up? I mean, in, in, administratively, uh, there's some logistical issues that we've had to overcome. Uh, we've got quite a, a, a structured position in place. In terms of actually meeting the le legislative objective of giving access to the public, it's there, it's done. In reality, uh, of the cases we've had, we've, we've only had a couple of journalists turn up at the first few, uh, and the recent cases haven't had anybody there other than our staff. But it might be dependent upon a case-by-case -case basis in the sense of the nature uh, and what we haven't had to date is a particularly publicly well-known or specifically high-profile case, which is where I think the legislation will <coughs> primarily end at. So we're fulfilling all the obligations of the, uh, the new regulatory framework, but in terms of other uh, vast swathes of people uh, watching every one of our hearings, no, they're not. But I think it's important to be open for the day that they may choose to be. Yeah. So we are, we're meeting that? Yeah. Yeah. It's the all, compliance and... Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. all videoed live to a separate yeah, yeah. location. Yeah. There is another side to your report, Julia, about specifically about service recovery yes. team. Yes, yeah. Which, uh, when you're ready, Commissioner, we'll just show some of the progressive work that we've been doing. Yeah. Uh, and I think that, alongside things like body worn video in the future and some of the things the Chief's talked about, is showing how it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really changing in a positive direction. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to? comment on, on the service recovery side of it, thanks. Okay then, so yeah. um, Professional Standards Department of Service Recovery Team was created in February of this year, as I mentioned earlier, to allow the centralisation of all public complaints and conduct matters. Um, Recognising that the handling of public complaints is critical to restore interest and confidence, and it is an essential tool in allowing lessons to be learned. So just to give a little bit of context, uh, you'll be aware, Commissioner, that prior to 2011, conduct and complaint matters were managed centrally by professional standards. But in 2011, a review was conducted which disbanded the department, leaving only an anti-corruption function. Uh, the review met its objectives of a 50% department for budget saving, but the devolvement of matters to districts and the inefficiencies which accompanied it ultimately resulted in an increase in expenditure uh, for the force. So sadly those savings were never realised. Um, also as a result of um, that review, there was no standard structure or working practices within districts, which resulted in lengthy and on occasions poor quality investigations. So staff dealing with complaints were also dealing with numerous other matters uh, and were not dedicated purely to complaint handling. As a result of that, we feel it had an impact on public confidence. So in October 2014, Coinciding with the Crawford review that we heard of earlier, um, we created a PSD pilot of a service recovery team. This was to allow or test the better use of local resolutions and at that time just involved two constables who were appointed to deal with uh, complaints. In a four month period they managed to deal with 139 cases. Uh, really cementing the case to make the team more permanent, which happened in February of this year. So from February uh, 2016, we've had the service recovery team working uh, direct in PSD, comprising of a inspector, two sergeants, and uh, two teams of eight split east and west. So we've got a team at Brighouse, uh, sergeant and eight, and a team at Wakefield, sergeant and eight. The key objective of the team is to increase the local resolution usage and allow swift resolution of complaints, removing the potential perception that investigations are being carried out to exonerate officers. Uh, prior to the pilot, the local resolution rate within West Yorkshire stood at 9%. During the pilot that I mentioned, it rose to 42%, and now has risen to 69%, which is higher than both our most similar forces, which stand at 37%, and the national figure, which is 47%. Just in terms of providing some reassurance there, we have invited the IPCC in to validate our working practices uh, and got a uh, clean bill of health from them. In terms of timeliness in how we're dealing with complaints, we're already seeing some real success um, in terms of the complaints deal with, dealt with by the team compared with the same period last year when cases were dealt with in districts and departments. 
So just looking at a, a few categories and the length of time that complaints uh, have been taken to be resolved. The average time to complete a local resolution between February and June 2015 was 32 days. That now stands at 11 days. The average time to complete investigations, um, February to June 2015, was 85 days. That now stands at 33 days. And the average time to complete cases which were withdrawn um, was 45 days, and that has now gone down to four days. So some considerable improvements there. Uh, we've also looked at the number of live cases which are over 40 days old and found that these have also reduced significantly. Uh, the PSD Compliance Unit has engaged heavily with uh, districts and departments prior to the uh, service recovery team being set up and post uh, to make sure that all existing workloads out in districts have been finalised or are being finalised. So you've got full comparison data in the PAP provider, but uh, just in terms of in terms of headline reports since the introduction of the team. Um, in March 2016, we had 381 live cases. 203 were more than 40 days old. That has been reviewed again in June, and that's reduced to uh, 268 live cases, and only 129, which are more than 40 days old. So again, some drastic reductions there. The current workloads are monitored weekly through our uh, professional standards prioritisation meeting which uh, sees both east and west teams come together uh, and at last count we had 90 live cases in the east and 101 in the west so pretty even split in terms of workloads. In total 613 complaint cases have been allocated to the service recovery team and 401 have been finalised uh, in the last few months, that's 65% of the work that's come through. And as I mentioned earlier, only one local resolution appeal has been upheld since the service recovery team began uh, dealing with complaints. We've got some specific work ongoing in the unit as well in terms of measuring confidence and satisfaction linked to the new processes. So we've developed a new complainant survey with the assistance of corporate support to measure complainant satisfaction. Uh, these are complainant uh, completed by volunteers, so again it's independent of the professional standards unit to provide that additional layer of transparency and they go through a list of validated questions. Uh, the compliance unit also work closely with the team around continuous improvement. This allows um, feedback from staff as well as issues that we might be picking up internally from more experienced staff around uh, working practices. Uh, we recognise that there also remains a need to ensure that service to internal customers continues to be met and in relation to this we continue to engage with districts to understand the best way of passing out appropriate training messages and lessons learned. Uh, we supported this by recently introducing dedicated detective inspectors and detective sergeant box to each district and department so we're confident the messages that are going out are consistent. We also, as I mentioned earlier, do health checks. Some of those are um, unannounced and so of the requests are specifically by uh, departmental heads. And we go out and do um, briefings on specific issues, again, to senior leadership teams across the force. So looking forward then in terms of the future of the team, um, we're technically 1.5 uh, full-time equivalents down. Uh, the staff at the moment are all police officers, but what we're looking to do is a, a programme of workforce modernisation. So we're working with the force, programme of change team, and we'll be looking for a better workforce mix. So we're currently recu uh, recruiting investigative officers and what this will allow us to do longer term is put those experienced uh, detectives and police constables back out onto frontline policing. In September we will undertake a formal uh, post implementation review of the work and again what we're hoping this will do is create an opportunity to scrutinise team achievements and continue that uh, improvement of work within the and across the team. Thank you very much. That's um, you know, a very positive um, update regarding the impact that, that the team had. I, I wish we could have had it in earlier, so I remember yeah. conversations that we had and the budget situation didn't allow us to sort of implement it sooner. Um, I'm sure the Police and Crime Panel will be pleased to uh, hear about this progress as well because they, the, their sub-panel that deal with look at complaints were very supportive of the, um, the pilot work that, that was undertaken. So, um, 
No, that that's a really good update. So thank you for that. Well, well done. Thank you. I yeah. think right, I think this is just a really good reflection, actually, yeah. of how we are trying to change our culture yeah. from being very process and task driven to putting people right at the very heart of what it is that we're trying to do. We've talked for a long time about being very victim centric in terms of crime. Here, we need to be very complainant centric in terms of the complaints, and I think you're starting to see um, the results of that hard work. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. No, no, thank you. Thanks for those reports and uh, uh, obviously we'll, there'll be a further report that comes back to a future meeting but uh, for the time being that, that's uh, a, good, a good update. So yeah, thanks. Thank you. Cheers.